The idea that there may be planets in the solar system lurking far out that we do not yet know of, entire planets, and in this case, Mars-sized objects, has been one of the more alluring areas of research in planetary science this, this decade. Now, there of course are the famous examples of the hypothesized Planet Nine and at least two others that I know of, but here, this is different you're with your new paper, that this is hypothesizing a different sort of planet in the uh, distant outer solar system. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, a very sort of popular route in the past decade has been interpreting the orbital elements of trans-Neptunian objects. These are objects that cross beyond the orbit of Neptune. And there seem to be some interesting possible patterns in terms of clustering of those orbital elements, and we'll learn a lot more when the Vera Rubin Observatory comes online and we get data from LSST. But there's also a lot of debate about these posited patterns. So they could imply the existence of a planet in the outer solar system, they could also imply the existence of perhaps a belt of debris in the outer solar system, or they could, at the end of the day, perhaps amount to a statistical fluke. It's too early to tell. Now, in this recent paper of mine, I take a completely different approach, because even if the patterns in the orbital elements end up being real, and even if the patterns in the orbital elements of trans-Neptunian objects end up being real, it's very difficult to explain the origin pathway for a 5 to 10 Earth mass planet in the outer solar system. It's, it's really hard to either scatter it out there from the inner solar system and then get it into the orbit that it needs to be on. And it's also really difficult to capture a planet of that mass from either you know stealing it directly from another solar system or capturing a free-floating planet. And the reason for that, I mean, there are a few reasons. One of them is that it needs to be at a low inclination, and that is quite unlikely for a random capture. But also more broadly, that these planets are rare when it comes to free-floating planets. Five to ten Earth mass planets, there are not that many out there that are just floating and not bound to a star. But with my approach, I said, I want to focus on a potential real origin pathway for the capture of a planet and see what that predicts. So this is not looking at the outer solar system and and working backwards from there, but rather working forwards from microlensing statistics on the abundance of free-floating planets and dynamical simulations that have been done about the solar system in its birth cluster. And really saying, you know, this is a possible origin pathway. And what is the what do the data imply for the abundance of such planets? And so all in all, this was this work was a simple combination of two results. One is microlensing. So for years and years, scientists have been constraining the abundance of free-floating planets, planets not bound to any particular star, by observing their microlensing signatures and have been getting better and better. And in August, a team of scientists announced that they had measured the mass function. So the abundance as a function of mass down to very low mass planets, almost down to the mass of Mars. And they found that there are way more small planets than there are large planets. Makes sense. That is generally true in nature but they actually put numbers on it. So, so this is really exciting, careful, detailed work. And, there, and there's a lot of follow-up measurements that will, that will confirm these numbers and bring the masses down even lower, including the Roman telescope, which is going to be a uh, microlensing workhorse. And then the second part are the dynamical simulations that have been done to study how do things get captured go from unbound orbits, you know, interstellar objects, if you like, to bound orbits to the sun. And 